Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> West Troop, and I'm back this week with another trending topics episode where we're going to talk about all what went down at the Disney parks. But now the last couple weeks we've been doing something a little different. I've been talking about a ride that is about to open at Shanghai Disneyland. Or, well, has opened already. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, this week we're going to take a look at a ride you probably have been on. At least one version of. Well, we got the new version now over at Shanghai Disneyland. We're going to talk about that a little bit, and then we got a lot of trending topics and news to cover about upcoming stuff at Walt Disney World and Disneyland. So make sure you stick around for that too. But we're going to kick it off talking a little bit about Peter Pan's flight, and then go into some trending topics. <laughs> Okay, so the Shanghai version of Peter Pan starts out like every other version. You board your galleon or your pirate ship, that is the ride vehicle, and then things get a little bit different. Uh, you see a projection of Tinkerbell flying aside of you, right, what, right as you uh, get ready to go off on the galleon. Um, and then you go through a set of doors, you start to fly over rooftops, just like in almost every version of this ride. And then you see a Peter Pan visual over, fly over the moon, and then he flies into the Darling's family window, and then you follow in right into the nursery, just like, you know, the normal versions that we're used to in the States. Um, and then you see the new animatronics, um, which look fabulous. Uh, Peter Pan shaking Tinkerbell over the Darling children to give them pixie dust to fly. They come a bit off of the ground, up and down, um, as he shakes Tinkerbell on top of them. Uh, and then, of course, we go out of the nursery and into the rooftops of London, and we actually see uh, Nana the dog flying and waving to us, um, which is awesome. <laughs> Usually you just see her in the, uh, you know, uh, alleyway there. Uh, in the Florida version, at least. But the, this one, you see her flying and waving. I really enjoyed that touch. Um, and, of course, we go over the miniature version of London, where you see Big Ben and all the fa uh, fabulous <laughs> sights. Um, you know, the little uh, miniature city. Um, while you can fly, you can fly, plays. And then there's a digital projection of Peter, Tink, and the kids flying that goes uh, on while that's going on, too. And much like Disneyland, then you fly over the replica of Neverland, the uh, big, you know, you can see the pirate ship, you can see different stuff on the Neverland replica, and then you pass by Skull Rock as well. And then we see something very different, uh, Tinkerbell trapped in the lantern, and Peter Pan trying to fool Hook with a different voice. Um, I haven't seen that in... I know they don't do that in the States. Uh, <laughs> that scene, which I thought was pretty neat for something different. Um, and then we see the TikTok croc, of course, the crocodile. Um, and then we see a digital Captain Hook fighting Peter Pan, or at least I assume that's what's going on, <laughs> because he is fighting, so I assume it's Peter Pan. Uh, and then passed by an animatronic Wendy, Smee, and some other pirates, much like you do in the States version. Um, and then at the end, uh, of course, we pass me trying to help Captain Hook, who's in the crocodile's mouth, in an iconic scene in all the versions of Peter Pan's flight. And then we go past Peter and the kids again, and Tink sends pirate sh the, sh the ship back to England, as she normally does in the, of the other versions of the ride, as guests fly back to the queue to finish off the ride. Um, it's about a three-minute... Two, uh, two minute and 50 second, three minute ride all together. 
um, which is a <laughs> which is about maybe even a little longer than we're used to with the Peter Pan's flight. It's a quick ride. Everyone knows that that's been on it, and you're gonna wait a long time to, for it. Um, I enjoy this version of Peter Pan's flight. Um, you know, it does the uh, the blend of the digital projections and the animatronics. Um, I think this is a good blend. This is a done well. Um, the animatronics portion, what they have, look amazing. If you compare them to the ones we have at Disneyland or Walt Disney World, um, the animatronics are much better. But, I mean, take, a, for, take that for what it's worth, because those were not made in the 70s <laughs> or whatnot um i know that they have updated a little bit in disneyland um and they updated the queue in walt disney world but you know it's like well yeah the animatronics are brand spanking new so of course they're gonna look better um but i really enjoyed uh especially i thought the ones were amazing were the ones at the end of the ride of peter pan and the darling children just the the clip of the video i saw they looked really great um I'm sure they all look amazing, but those ones especially look really cool. Um, my only gripe, I would say, is I would have liked to have seen another animatronic Captain Hook instead of the projection for the fight. Um, I, you know, I know the one in Florida, people say, looks kind of cheesy with uh, Hook and Pan just sort of, hey, 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 come here, come here, little pie, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but it felt weird that... I don't know, maybe I'm just so used to seeing that fight scene that it was on a projection. And I was like, eh, but that's just me being picky. Um, well, like I said, my only gripe, I would have rather... It's weird there's only one Captain Hook animatronic in that ride, unless I missed it somewhere. But And it's the one of him in the alligator. Um, his mouth. So it's sort of like, oh, I would have liked to see a little more Captain Hook. I mean, there's two Smee animatronics. You can't you make another Captain Hook? Uh, one of the most famous villains of all time, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's a great looking update to a Disney classic and, uh, you know, I would more than be happy to ride this version of Peter Pan's flight and see it in person. Um, but you know, we get what we get, right? <laughs> so moving on, we're going to hop on a plane back to the States now, and we're going to talk a little bit about Epcot. We're going to go do some park hopping tonight. Woo! Um, so we can now confirm in, another, in a huge opening for Epcot uh, that they will reopen the Frozen, or I should call it the Frozen Over Norway Pavilion, with both of the openings of the Frozen Ever After ride and the Royal Summer Haas character experience on June 21st. Hear that, everybody? June 21st will be the opening of the reopening of the Norway Pavilion with the Frozen Every After Ride and the Summer Haas. Fast Pass Plus reservations are now currently available for Frozen Ever After. So, ladies and gentlemen, book those things. <laughs> because I'm sure June 21st rolls around, I think you're going to be out of SOL for Fast Passes. Unless those people that complain about the Maelstrom are actually true. <laughs> That they refuse to ride the Frozen ride, then maybe you'll get on easy. Who knows? But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so yes, uh, definitely book your fast passes now. But interestingly enough, the Royal Summer Haas is not available at this moment, at least, to book a fast pass plus four. But chances are you'll probably will be able to when it comes closer to the time. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Epcot in a somewhat shocking note. <laughs> Epcot announced that work has been com this is not the shocking part uh, completed on the third Soren Theater and to celebrate the park is bringing bringing yeah they're going to do that and they're going to bring it back too the original Soren over California attraction which of course it was the original Soren in Epcot but it's also called Soren over California in California that's where it originated say um, for a limited engagement beginning May 27th and running through June 16th. So for a little less than a month, you can catch the original Soren once again at Epcot, which is really cool, before they change it up. the day uh, June 16th, of course, the day before Soren Over the World debuts. Soren Over the World, Soren. <laughs> Fast Pass Plus reservations for this experience are available via My Disney Experience right 
now. So if you want to soar over Cali one last time, book it. And also, the Disney California Adventure version will be open from now until June 15th as well. So if you want to check it out one more time at Disney's California Adventure, if you are on the West Coast, make sure you get there as well before they change the movie. And also with Epcot, earlier this week, the sum of all thrills attraction and interventions disappeared from the Epcot guide map. Then a few days later, the sum of all thrills website put up a notice that ride replays will only be available for guest review until June 30th, 2016. Even though Disney hasn't confirmed it yet, it looks like this attraction will be closing soon. And cast members are reporting that the attraction will see its final day of operation next week on May 27th. Well, actually, it's this week. <laughs> it's in a couple days. If this attraction closes, it will leave interventions with only two exhibits. Um, you know, guys, how I feel about interventions. It's, it's dead. <laughs> uh, put a... Put a fork in it because it's done um yeah it doesn't surprise me anyway hopping over to the animal kingdom in less than a week disney's animal kingdom will debut its first time first time nighttime spectacular while it's not what had been originally planned of course rivers of light jungle book alive with magic will feature projection from the film original score arrangements and barges with dancers and performers helping to bring the story of the popular film to life god i can't wait to hear the uh, i want to be like you from christopher walken again especially in person <laughs> oh ooby doo i want to be like you ooh, ooh. Beginning May 28th, the new show will be performed twice nightly, with the first show at 9 o'clock p.m. and the second at 10.30 p.m. Fast Pass Plus reservations are now available, and guests with these reservations will be seated on the Asia side of the amphitheater, while standby and dining package guests will be seated on the side near Dino Land. <gasps> Digging in Dino Land, yaman! <laughs> Finally, the show will be approximately 20 minutes long. So if you want to check out, if you want to, you want to be like me, <laughs> and you would be interested in that show, then definitely check out the Jungle Book show, live spectacular, spectacular, at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, let's lay off the alcohol, Wes. We now <laughs> have more opening dates for two more upcoming experiences as well. June 17th will be the debut of Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair at the Magic Kingdom during the day, and at night, the Star Wars A Galactic Spectacular will debut for the first time as well. So mark your calendars for June 17th if you're interested in seeing those. Now last week we talked about Echo Lake Eats opening up at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The three new semi-permanent food kiosks in the Echo Lake area of the park includes... Bocados de Lago Nachos and Empanadas, where you can find loaded cheese chili nachos with guacamole, beef empanadas, roasted corn and black bean salsa, queso fresco with cilantro sour cream, and dulce de leche cookie. <laughs> At Sliders to the Stars, the second place you can eat, you can get full, pull, full, yeah, pulled beef brisket sliders with arugula, pickled onions, and horseradish. Yeah. Oh, and sesame bun served with the chips. Also, pulled barbecue chicken sliders with coleslaw and chipotle sauce on a br br brioche bun served with chips. And for dessert, a Mickey brownie. And Hollywood Waffles of Fame, you can get shaved turkey and Gouda waffle sandwich with mixed greens, bacon, tomato, and herb cheese pesto served with chips. Or you can have the shaved ham and cheddar Fuchiaia. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad with pronouncing food. It's so horrible. Yeah. Fuchia? There you go. With watercress and spicy mustard served with chips. And of course, you can get a freshly baked chocolate chip cookie for dessert. So if you're looking for something new to eat over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, check out the kiosks in Echo Lake. And finally, Grad Night at Walt Disney World was an annual tradition for many years. Until 2011, that is, when it was unceremoniously dropped with no official reason given. You know what? 
thank God, because grad night at Disneyland sucked. Because I obviously I graduated a long time ago. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I had to take in the big crowds and it sucked. So whatever. But, ladies and gentlemen, instead of taking place at the parks, um, now it looks like the event will be back for the class of 2017 next year, but it will be now be able to enjoy, you know, if you're a graduate, you'll be able to enjoy an evening of fun at the Typhoon Lagoon Water Park. Oh boy, uh, I guess this will be alright. I just see a lot of lawsuits for some reason coming from this. <laughs> Grad night at Typhoon Lagoon. Woo, okay. Um, lock up that alcohol, everybody. But anyway, um, so if you're interested in the grad night at Disney, um, look out for that next year, and I'll be sure to look out as well. All right, well, that's the show for this week. I'll be back next week with another trending topic show. And, of course, I'll be back with another Hitchhiking Host Show 101, all about the history of a Disney attraction uh, this week, too. Um, if you haven't seen this week's episode, it's all about the Indian Village uh, back in old-school Disneyland. So make sure you go and check that out on the channel, too. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Show. You can like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Show. Follow on the Twitter at Hitcho Show or the Instagram at Hitcho Show. And of course, you can uh, listen to the show on Podbean. It's hitchoshow.podbean.com or search on iTunes or Stitcher under West Troop or the Hitchhiking Ho Show. Until next time, don't forget to. For the next episode, see ya.